Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kristen and today I wanna to play with some inks. So I've got plenty of papers and plenty of swatch cards. Let's dig in. So I'll be swatching on Tomoe River paper, Iro Full paper, Yamamoto Bank paper, Cosmo Air Light, Midori, coloring and wearing gold swatch cards as well. Yeah, so there will be lots, lots and lots of inks. So I've got plenty of samples and a few bottled inks as well. The first one is Tasia Kurocha. Okay, so I purchased this ink from Venice Pens. So it's a four milliliter sample and it looks to be a brownish ink. I love that there are four mil samples from Venice Pens. I don't have to struggle to reach all the way down to the bottom of the vial. Seems to be a really deep, deep brown. I want to get it in there. All right, fine. It's a deep, deep brown, cool toned brown, it looks like. Next, we've got Kobe number 16, not a brown. Yes, I purchased another brown fountain pen ink. I actually have four that I want to test out. And that's in addition to the browns that I've already got in my collection. Yes, because I love brown inks that much. Some people love having multiple blues in their collections. Some love purples in their collection. I enjoy blues and purples as well, but I think my heart is is with the browns or at least like the greenish browns you know there are some days when i prefer browns and other days when i prefer greens a little bit more and when i made this purchase i was very much into brown inks so it's another one of those deep dark browns i wonder if there's going to be like any sort of green sheen on this one okay i am learning how to use this kakimori dip nib I love that this seems to be slightly warmer, a little bit lighter than Tasia Kurocha. Seems to be a slight black sheen to Tasia Kurocha. And I wonder if this Kobe ink is going to be more of a straightforward brown. quite a bit yeah it feels like this ink is a bit wet <laughs> just a little bit I might enjoy it it looks cool but it's like a, a murky greenish it gives me the feeling of green but without without me actually visually seeing the green in here I'm getting I'm becoming a little bit more curious about chromatography for some of these inks so that I can get a better idea or a better understanding of what it is that really draws me in to some of these. It's not something that that's super important to me since I don't use my inks for watercolor or any sort of art. It really is just writing and journaling and memory keeping and things. So doing chromatography would be more of just assuaging my curiosity. P.W. Ackerman SBRE Brown. I've been wanting to try this one for so long. When I first heard about this ink, I was a little bit underwhelmed because I wasn't into my brown inks phase at that point. But now that I am truly loving brown inks, it's like, why in the world have I not tried SBRE Brown? So I went ahead and bought a sample and I'm excited to see what all the hype is about. Like for those who really, really love your brown inks, do you enjoy SBRE Brown? It's much more saturated than I thought it would be. Initially, I was turned off from Pelican 4001 Brilliant Brown until I used it in a pen. And that ink has become so beautiful to me. 
And I have a feeling that this is probably going to run along those same lines for me. Oh, wow. I think this is drying like a less saturated coat. Like it goes down pretty saturated, but it's drying down like a little bit softer. Pretty cool. See, I love inks when they have like a little surprise, just waiting for those who are bold enough to try. The first two were definitely a deeper shade. This one is lighter. The saturation is much more obvious now that since it is a lighter ink. It's almost orange. I don't know. I don't know. It looks really nice on Midori paper. I like not a brown and SBRE brown on here. I mean, Tatsuya Kurocha looks really nice as well. Okay, so I'm liking all three browns. What is that candy? Ooh, oh no. Mmm, Werther's? I don't know, it's like the caramel candy that my grandmother used to have in her purse and all these other ones was just like, it reminds me of childhood. My childhood and my grandparents. That's, this is, that's what this ink does. These browns are making me so happy right now. Okay, and this last brown ink, I purchased it purely for the name because I'm from Georgia and I love pecans. So here is Papier Plume Pecan or Pecan, depending on where you're from. It's got two special meanings for me. It reminds me of home and I just, I love eating pecans. Let's go for it. It's like this ink has like a bit of a greenish feel or emotion to it as well which I'm loving. I, I like, I'm sorry. I like these green and brown, these green and brown inks, the browns that have a feel of a hint of green in them and the greens that have a hint of brown in them. I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, these browns make me so happy. I like it. Next, we've got Sailor Shikyori Rikucha. I love this. Oh. <laughs> the green that turns brown, yes. Like tea leaves, of course. Look at pecan. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Pecan might be one of my favorites. Mm, mm hmm. So Ricky Shop dries brown. Look at this green here, but the text. The writing is already dried down to a brown color, and that is what I love about this ink. Look at that. I am doing this because I now have a bottle of this ink. 
Now, next up we've got the Birmingham Pin Company Lichen. This is my first experience with Birmingham Pin Company inks, so I hope it's a good one. Very well secured and not over full, yay. <laughs> yeah, the ink feels wet. <laughs> Look at that, it went down green, Ricky Cha. Ricky Cha went down green and now it's brown. This, yes, yes, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so very happy about this. Look at that gorgeous green. Like it didn't want to grab the bank paper. Ryukyucha is blue on here. <laughs> the same thing with Sailor 50 States Georgia. Ryukyucha is doing the exact same thing on Cosmo Airlight paper. Look at that. I like the paleness of this ink. I wasn't expecting it to be so light, but it's pretty cool. See, look at that. Beautiful paper and Cosmo Air Light Paper, Riku Cha, a green ink that turns brown, actually turns blue on these two papers. Oh, ooh, I went real deep. <laughs> yeah, I like this cool tone green. It's like a cool olive, cool tone olive. And there you go, Riku Cha went down brown and it's turning like a grayish navy, a desaturated navy. These inks are so gorgeous. Okay, so the next ink color is Diamine Safari. The lichen is so gorgeous on here. All right, the next ink is Califolio Teodora. This is a new to me brand, but it looks like a gorgeous tealy green. It's coating the vial nicely, so it should be decently wet. Look at Lichen is gray here. <gasps> I love it so much. This is a bright green. I thought it was going to be bluer than this. Okay. Okay. So this reminds me of Diplomat Deep Green and the Pelican 4001 Deep Green. Dark Green. <laughs> it was like a super saturated version of this color, which I do really enjoy. Next is Robert Oster River of Fire. This came highly recommended by one of my viewers. So here I am. Ooh, ooh. Okay, I'm liking the, I like the shade. I like the color, okay. This is a deep dark color. Wow, Theodora looks like, it looks velvety right there. And luminous, like it's got some secret light <laughs> shining through it. That is so cool looking. Whoa, this is nice. Right, river fire, yep. Look at how dark that is, whoa. All right, yo, I see you, I see you, Robert Oster, I see you.
I can't even express how much I really like this ink color right now. It's, it's so good. This looks so good. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is that tealy blue color that I was expecting to see in Teodora, but oh yeah, this is this is nice. This is really nice. I can see myself buying a bottle of this because it's just so lovely. That's that's the ink. That's the ink right there. Look at that. This reminds me of like a Van Diemen's color. Okay, Tasia Sabimidori. Oh, look at that pretty blue. Okay, this pretty deep blue. I'm loving these, these deep, deep dark colors. Whoa, this is a rich, rich blue. Ooh, where's Bleu de Profondeur? I want to see that next to this one. Look at that gorgeous blue. And it looks like it's changing colors. It's losing saturation as it dries. I want to know what it's going to be. I think this is one of the inks that Simone swatched in one of her videos and it just looked so cool as it dried. I didn't realize how blue and how saturated it started out. It's it looks gray up here in the corner where it's drying. So I don't know if you've noticed this about me yet, but when an ink behaves unpredictably on paper it, as far as the color goes, it makes me even more excited to use it. It's like, what color am I gonna see today? See, I love that, I love that. And I'm so glad that I love it on Tomoe River paper because this is my standard. <laughs> I'm waiting for the teal. Hmm, I can't even tell what color this is. <laughs> I see brown, I see green. There might be hints of blue in here as well, but look, look at that. It's no longer bright blue. Whoa, this, this color right here. See, you see that? Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, I'm excited to see what this looks like as it, after it dries. Wow, wow, okay. Look at that. Okay, so this brownish color is actually, it looks like it might be a sheen. It's more of like a reddish sheening halo. I like it. And that river fire just, it excites me. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Look, ooh -wee. It's not bright blue anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what's next? What's next? Pilot blue. This Pilot Blue or Namiki Blue was the ink bottle that came with my Pilot Custom 823. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch that as part of today's little swatch fest. Oh, okay, let me get you out of the Look at these gorgeous colors. Oh my goodness. They're, this has me all kinds of excited. This is so shockingly blue. This is blue, blue, blue. This is a blues blue. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm like, man's man, this is a blues blue. Pilot blue <laughs> is so straightforward. Can't be mad at it. This, this is so blue. I don't know if I've ever responded to a blue this way. This is, this is blue. If you ever want to know what blue looks like, get you a bottle of Pilot blue. There you go. And this is probably going to be like the truest, most straightforward color <laughs> on the paper. Mm-hmm. This color stands out so much. Look at that, look at this gorgeous color right here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's definitely like a reddish sheen. 
on top of it, but I love the way that it looks together with the sheen. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's so blue. <laughs> Ooh, wet. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was a lot on the nib. It dried down softer, which is good for me. I don't know if it's something that would make others a bit upset, but I, I like that it calmed down a bit. <laughs> as it dried. So it is like a super bright electric, almost blue, but it doesn't look like it would have any sheen to it. It's just such a straightforward, bright and bold blue, but the dryer ink, the dried ink, it might have a bit of sheen if you lay down enough of it, but it's so very subtle. So the next blue, Urbain Bleu de Profondeur. Oh, wow. It's so pretty. It's like a violet blue, I think. <clears throat> okay, nope. <laughs> wow, okay. Had a momentary lapse in judgment right there. This is dark. Yes. Yes, a deep blue. Yeah, so there's like a little bit of a reddish halo going on with the Pilot Blue. I wonder how close it is in color to Waterman Serenity Blue. That's so dark. That is so, so dark. Oh, look at this sheet on Cosmo Air Light. Look at that sheen. I feel like I don't say very much while I'm doing these swatches because I'm really focused on looking at the colors and determining whether or not I like them and guessing whether or not they're going to change colors as they dry. But maybe I can do like a Q&A one time, um, someday. The next time I do like a swatch fest like this, maybe I can answer some of your most burning questions about me. So yeah, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer while I do my swatching videos, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. Next is Sailor Yuromeku Date Kokoro. I saw an opportunity to get it and I was like, why not? It's a beautiful color and I would love to try it like multiple times in multiple different inks. So I went ahead and got a bottle of it. This actually looks similar to Bleu de Profondeur in the bottle. So I wonder how different it's going to look once I get it down on paper. So it is one of those color changing, look at how dark and navy Bleu de Profondeur looks on this paper, that's gorgeous. Okay, so yeah, Tate Kokoro looks really nice. One of those cool looking colors that switches or changes as it dries. And it looks a bit different depending on the paper that you use. So all I remember is that there is like a reddish purplish type sheen on top of this color that looks a bit brown on some papers. Look at that. Yeah, that sheen just makes it look purple. So it looks like it... Crap! All right. So my camera actually ran out of space. Needed to take a break and remove some files. Now I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Oof. It's drying, already changing. Next is Jacobin Poussière de Lune. So this is one of the ink colors and I couldn't really decide which one I would want to try more. The La Ronde de Cassis or Poussière de Lune. So this is a more purple ink in comparison to La Ronde de Cassis pink fuchsia, I guess. This feels dry. 
Like I have ink on here, but it doesn't want to come off of the nib. What is going on? I I'm I'm inking it up. For some reason it doesn't want to come off the nib. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It doesn't want to do. <laughs> this hurts my feelings because it looks like such a nice, nice ink, but it doesn't want to work. This is gonna make me want to avoid the ink like the plague. Like, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It looks really nice, but if it's not going to behave, I just, I mean, there's no use for it. I'm not liking this color so far. <laughs> Next is Pilot Shizuku Yamabuto. I have waited long enough to try this ink that so many people adore. And I've also got one or two more inks that I can compare to this one. I like how bold it is. I mean, like, it looks like a confident ink. Some of these inks just give me like some sort of clue as to the type of personality it has. And this seems like a confident color. Oh, I didn't do that. Yeah, that was such a gorgeous color. Hmm. Yeah, this is quite a strong pink. Magenta future. All right, next is Califolio Andronopal. This is one of the fuchsia pink magenta colors that I wanted to test next to Palette Aroshizuku Yamabuto. It looks a bit more red than Yamabuto. Here is Papier Plume Garden District Azalea. Another fuchsia-like color, magenta-ish color. But this definitely looks more red. Mmm. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be a fuchsia color, but no, it's definitely like a, it's a peachy color. Okay, we're good, I can adjust. I'll be all right. I like the peachy look on here. Yes, it's a light color, a bit dry, but I still kind of like it. We'll see if I actually like writing with it. I don't know. I don't know.
but it's a very gorgeous color. All right, so the last ink is Sailor Yurameku Kitsune Byori. This is another one of those color changing inks and another one that I really forgot how it looks on certain papers. I did not expect this color. It looks like one of those like weird greenish brown colors, but then it dry it's drying to almost a desaturated something. And maybe it'll turn pink after a while. I don't know. We'll see. I was expecting pink, but I got like a greenish brown. This seems like a grosser version of Diamine. What is it? Dusted Truffle from last year's ink, not ink flight, from last year's ink vent calendar. And I guess I should do a uh, comparison between this one and some brown pinks and pink browns. Yeah, it looks like a brownish gray. Uh, Kitsune. It is so fascinating to me. I love this. And I wonder if I'll still love it once it's dried down to its final color. It looks so cool. Almost done. I'm almost done. Uh, yeah, look at the pinkish. It's like a pinkish gray color. A super desaturated pink. Which I am all right with. Look at that. It's like green next to the pink. Look at how weird that looks. I love the weirdness. Oh, I love how strange this looks. It looks green next to the pink. It looks almost the same color as the, the chipboard, the cardboard that I'm using. It is almost the same color. <laughs> Take a look at that. Oh my goodness. I am, I am very, very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy with these inks. These inks are gorgeous. These are some really nice inks. Very, very, very nice inks. Now, let me move these out of the way so that I can show you what these inks look like on these various papers. Here is Tamori River. Oh my gosh, the crinkle. Oh my God, look at it, it's just, <laughs> okay. These inks are just so gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, I really do like Kitsune Beauty. I love something about each one of these inks. I really enjoy like the rich warmth of these browns and the desaturated greens. I love this too. I'm liking, I'm liking lichen. I don't always embrace a yellowish green color like Diamine Safari, but I really love like the more grungy ones. So this Birmingham Pin Company lichen, which looks different on other papers I'll show you soon, but this is a really nice color. Teodora is nice, but I already have two inks that are pretty close, pretty similar to Califolio Teodora. Robert Oster River of Fire is gorgeous. Tasia Sabimidori is absolutely gorgeous. Pilot Blue is your standard blue. It is not my favorite, but it is a good, good solid blue. Urbain Bleu de Profondeur. I really love the deepness of this ink. Like if you give me a really, really nice deep dark color, I'm probably gonna like it just because of the richness. I really like that. Sailor Yurameku Date Kokoro. It's got that purple, that really nice purple. And I started to get excited about Jacques Urbain Poussière de Lune because it has like this Date Kokoro deepness and richness but it comes with shading as well but unfortunately it is a super dry ink i would need to put this in a wet pen to see if i could counteract some of this high surface tension pilot of russia zuko yamaburo is a decent color it's a nice color i enjoyed using 
I think it's a wearing cool ink. It's not the Great Gatsby. It's the other one. Pride and Prejudice, I think it was. I enjoyed using Warringal's Pride and Prejudice and I wanna see how that stacks up against this ink color. Califolio Andronopal is really lovely. It's like a fuchsia magenta color. It's like a deep magenta color and I kinda like that. Garden District Azalea. This is like the peachy coral salmon color that I've been looking for, I think. Do I like this color in a pen? This is a color that I just love seeing in nature and in clothing. I'm actually wearing some pants that are pretty similar to this color, but do I really want to write with a color like this? I don't know. Kitsune Beauty is, at, oh, I barely have words to say how much I really love this color. This is a, a so nice and it's so calming because it's not like in your face like a bunch of colors. Like if you need a break from something that's bright and bold like these and that one, you can do Kitsune Beauty and it's just, I feel like I'm at a spa or in a park or I don't know. It gives me that calm sensation where it's just like, there are no demands. It's just me and my thoughts and it's a wonderful thing. That That's what I get when I see a color like this one. Now let's take a look at these inks across multiple papers. It's still a bit wet right there. Look at how gray they, okay, let me keep going. Keep going, girl, keep going. So I guess we can take a look at this first column of inks. Kurocha. It looks pretty consistent across papers. It is warmer on Yamamoto bank paper and Midori paper, but pretty cool. Look it, look it, look it, look it, look at Ryucha. <laughs> Rikucha, Sailor Shikyori Rikucha. So it's, it's brown, black navy on Tamoy River. It is a golden brown, almost bronze color on Yamamoto bank paper. It's a navy here on Cosmo Airlight. It is a brown on Midori. It is a navy on Iroful. So this is something that I was just like, look at how cool these inks can behave depending on the paper that you choose. I think that's just so awesome. Robert Oster River of Fire was probably the most shocking for me as far as colors go. This is something that I would love to have in my collection. I would love to have an ink this color. Oh, and I have a pen for this ink. So I am ready, I'm ready to use this one. I'm so ready to use this one because it just looks so gorgeous. I typically see inks that are more of the bluish color like this Tasia Sapimidori on Iroful paper or like this greenish color right here. But I rarely find one that's somewhere in between that just looks so good. That looks good. I like River of Fire. Thank you, viewer. You know who you are. I hope you hear my appreciation for your recommendation. Any of you have any recommendations for an ink that you think that I would love, please let me know because I am open to trying new things. Yeah, going down to Date Gokoro, you can see the sheen is quite prevalent on three papers, but not on Iroful or Cosmo Air light paper. So there's just a hint of a coppery red sheen on Iroful and Cosmo Air Light, but on Midori, Tamoy River, and the bank paper, it's more of a, I guess a reddish. I mean, I guess it's still got it, but it's, it's more of a reddish purplish tint to the sheen on these three papers. Look at that on Iroful paper. Papier Plume Garden District Azalea is lovely. It's lovely. It is more saturated on, what's this? The Yamamoto bank paper and the Midori paper. It is less saturated on these three, Iroful, Tamoy River, and Cosmo Airlight paper. I kind of like the softer colors. I kind of like the softer color and I'm glad that the softer color is here on Tamoy River paper where I will be using these inks most of the time. On to the next column. We're here with Kobe 16, not a brown. Kobe 16, not a brown. I like the warmth here on Midori paper. Oh, let me bring you back over some. I like Kobe 16, not a brown on the Yamamoto bank paper and the Midori paper. Yeah, I really like how it looks here, but I think that I like some other browns a little bit more, even though I appreciate being able to see the depth of color on not a brown more than I see on Tasia's Kurocha on Tamoy River paper. So let's take a look at BPC Birmingham Pen Company Lichen. Gosh, I love how like, silvery, silvery gray this color is on Iroful paper. And it looks so good on Cosmo Air Light as well. I'm happy about these inks. Now take a look at Tasia Sapimidori. It looks almost orange here. The sheen, the sheen looks almost orange on the Yamamoto bank paper here. It's a reddish sheen on Cosmo Air Light. It's barely noticeable on Midori. 
and it's a yeah a reddish sheen also on earful paper but i love how it looks on yamamoto bank midori it is okay on tamoy river but i was really i'm really loving this green i'm really loving the green the greenish hue on midori down to jacobin poussière de lune it's a nice color i'm not too excited about it right now because of how difficult it was to apply it to the papers going down to kitsune Biori, it looks gray on these two and it looks pinker here i am looking forward to seeing this next to some other colors but i love how ashy gray it is on Iroful and cosmo air light papers it's fine here too but i really <laughs> i really think that this is cool now let's move over to Ackerman sbre brown and papier plume pecan or pecan i love pecan on these papers look at look at pecan on cosmo air light and pecan on Iroful. It's like a grayish color. I appreciate that grayish color there, but I really love how it how it brings out like a peakish, peakish, pinkish, peachish, a warm reddish tone in this brown here on Midori paper. And I also love how it looks on Tamori River paper. This is one of the inks that just because I have some sentimental ties to the name itself, I, I almost don't care what color the ink is. It just, it's going to look good in my eyes because it feels good to have it in my collection. I would probably purchase a dollar of this ink just to have it. And I'm so glad that it is well-behaved ink as well. And I would probably put this in so many of my fountain pens because it's one of these browns that just works with a lot of my brown or gold trim fountain pens. All right, so that's Dimine Safari. It looks sort of consistent across papers. It's a bit cooler here on Cosmo Airlight and Iroful. Brings out much more yellow on the Midori paper, this cream Midori paper. Califolio Teodora. It again, it looks very similar to um, some inks that I have, but it's mostly consistent across papers. There's a bit more shading on Midori and a little bit right there, but I don't see very much sheen. There's a bit of haloing there. Uh, going down to Pilot Blue. It is pretty consistent. It looks a bit more ashy here on this cream paper. Bleu de profondeur. It has a gold sheen, which I did not know. I didn't realize that there was a sheen or, you know, a bit of haloing with Urban Bleu de profondeur, but I like it. I really like that. That was a gorgeous ink color. And I think I have something that's very similar to it. I put that ink into my Aurora fountain pen. It was one of the really, really dark blue inks that I, I actually did enjoy. I have no doubt that I'll enjoy this one as well, but I wonder if I'll get bored with it if it's too, too dark. Pilot Iroshizuku Yamaburo. I love that golden sheen right here. This, this gold sheen is just, that's fun. On Cosmo Air Light, it just looks like, see the sheen on Cosmo Air Light is much more concentrated. It doesn't spread throughout. It doesn't spread evenly over the ink itself. It's like the sheen just pools in a puddle at the edge of the puddle. And I just think that is so cool. Like how some papers just make inks look completely different. Like Tasia Sapimidori and Sailor Shikyori Rikicha. Califolio Andronopal is beautiful. I love how warm and saturated Andronopal looks on the bank paper and Midori paper, but it's not bad on the others. I actually do not prefer it on Cosmo Airlight and Iroful because it looks a bit softer. It looks a bit softer here. And so I, I, I actually do prefer it. And it's more bold version on bank paper and Midori paper. That's all the papers. Yeah, so these are the bottle inks that I've added to my collection. Oh, I didn't do the swatch for Kitsune Beauty. So while that dries, I'm gonna take a look at the coloring cards. So many cards. Oh my goodness. Look at all those colors. Look at all these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful colors. Now I have to figure out which ones are similar in my collection already. Look at Pecan and Riki Cha right next to each other. They are so very similar. Not a brown is not too far off either. But yeah, look at that. Sabi Midori is gorgeous. And Lichen is a more straightforward version of this color, so it doesn't have that teal undertone. Now, let's take a look at Oyster Hour next to Kitsune Biori. 
not close at all. SBRE Brown next to Robert Oster Whiskey. So it is more brown, less saturated than whiskey. Teranishi Opera Rose is a little bit more peach than SBRE Brown. Fire Opal next to SBRE Brown. Getting close to Azalea. So here's Dominant Industry Maple next to Azalea. Empire Red by Noodlers. Sindur, Krishna, Sindur. This is a color that I made from uh, Ferris Wheel Press, Peach, something Peach, and uh, Monteverde <laughs> Strawberry Shortcake. Wistful Watermelon by Diamine next to Papier Plum Garden District Azalea. Here is Wearing Gold White Rabbit next to Sailor Yurmeku Kitsune Byori. I like that this is much more legible than White Rabbit. Here is Manuscript Praline Frosting next to SBRE Brown. I don't really have anything that's super similar to SBRE Brown. Yeah, it's like whiskey is a bit too orange. Teranishi Opera Rose is pinkish. I mean, peach colored. Fire Opal is more saturated, more red. Here is Pelican 4001 Brilliant Brown next to Ackerman SBRE Brown. So it's definitely more red than the SBRE Brown. SBRE Brown seems a little bit more golden by comparison. Diamond Ancient Copper next to Ackerman SBRE Brown. Let's take a look at some of these weird shades. Next to Kitsune Byori, Colorverse Jupiter Flyby. Here it is, Kitsune Byori. <laughs> and so I've got it next to Warangal Mason's Song. Really close. It might be slightly more saturated than Mason's Song. Don Quixote is slightly more saturated, a bit warmer. And here is Incubara 514 Brown Pink. And Aurelium Tulip Moth Warm. Hmm. Colorverse Alpha Sagittarius. And Ferris Wheel Press Cream of Earl. All right, let's take a look at these browns. Kudo Cha next to Praline Frosting. Vampire Red. Hmm. Let's see, is it any closer to... Vampire Red is definitely more red than SBRE Brown. Kiona Oto number 10 Ochiguriro is less saturated. And it's a more straightforward brown than Reiki Cha. It's got more black than Pecan by Papier Plume. Less saturated than Nada Brown and less saturated than Kurocha. Here is Suyuki Kokoro. Sailor, 50 States, Georgia, Papier Plume, Pecan. You can see <laughs> that this Georgia girl loves her Georgia inks. Look at that. Oh, these both make me so happy. And even though I have Sailor, 50 States, Georgia, I... <laughs> I would still pick up a bottle of Papier Plume Pecan because, just because, man. Oh, <laughs> there's absolutely no need to have all three of these inks. But guess what? I want all three of these inks. <laughs> Here's Ricky Cha. Where's the other? Okay, this is this is it. Ricky Cha is the ink. Okay. So yeah, this was my first sample of the ink, and now I have a full bottle of the ink. Those are my browns. Let's take a look at these pinks and purples. Here's Colorverse Red Shift next to Califolio Antinopal. Monarca Cardona. It has a sheen and shimmer, but the base color is quite similar to Califolio Antinopal. Yamabudo next to Diamond Rider's Blood. Robert Oster Napa. Black Swan and Australian Roses. Here it is. Weringle, Pride and Prejudice. This is definitely a brighter color than Pilot of Roshizuku Yamabudo. But that brightness might also be due to the sheen, this golden sheen in Pride and Prejudice. So if we take a look at like the corner right here and that bit right there, it is pretty similar to the base of this color, even though it looks to be a bit cooler, a bit more purple than Pride and Prejudice. Double Raspberry by Ferris Wheel Press. Diamond Jingleberry. Yeah, so this is a bit more red. Yamabudo is a bit closer to Jingleberry than Andronoble is. L'Arme de Cassis. Oh, so very similar. All right, so now we've got Le Bon Zeus. It's more purple than Yamabuto. Van Diemen's Mad Half Hour. Platinum Lavender Black. It's more similar than I thought it would be, even though this looks a bit more purple in the writing. Roar and Cleaner Alt Bordeaux. Robert Oster Pink Squirrel. There he is. Date Kokoro. Date Kokoro. <laughs> Date Gokoro and Ferris Wheel Press Grape Ice Pop. Ferris Wheel Press Grape Ice Pop next to Poussière de Lune. 
interesting that I just got rid of a bottle of this ink, but it was because the packaging and the color, they, they diverged. It was always some mental block and a mental issue for me because the packaging never gave a hint as to the actual color of the ink. But right here, plain as day shows that I like this color. I really do enjoy this shade of purple. You give me a box that looks this color and you give me an ink that looks this color, I'm not gonna be happy about it. So yeah, I got rid of that ink. Poussière de Lune next to Diatremenis Aubergine, which is a blue or cooler tone color. Diamond Deck the Halls, it's much darker. Colorverse Pillars of Creation has a lot more sheen. And the same thing with Van Diemen's Sea Urchin. It is a purple, <laughs> but it's very difficult to see. All right, those are my purples. Now, let's take a look at these greens. And then the blues are next and we'll be done. All right, so I've got Diamond Safari. It is a bit too dark for these. Next to Olive Swirl. Olive Swirl is a bit more yellow. Tusla Bua. Okay, Diamond Safari next to Robert Oster Detox. Sailor Shikyori, Tokiwa Matsu. They are very similar. This is, yeah. Tokiwa Matsu is one of the inks that I really, really enjoy using. And now it makes sense that I was drawn to Diamond Safari. But I really enjoy this reddish sheen that also, that kind of makes the ink look a bit brown sometimes. Sailor Yurimaku Kyokuya, next to Birmingham Pen Company Lichen. Tom Sawyer, next to Lichen. Roran Cleaner Altco Grun next to Diamond Safari. Venta Inks Leite. Ferris Wheel Press Peter Moss. Birmingham Pen Company Lichen next to Olivine by Monteverde. Pannonia Ink Laboratory Z15 next to Birmingham Pen Company Lichen. And next to Tasia Sabimidori. Sabimidori. Uh, Octopus Fluids Green Ostrich is a bit more saturated. Colorverse Alpha Pisces next to Birmingham Pin Company Lichen. Manglar next to Lichen. Wear and Go King Lear next to Birmingham Pin Company Lichen. King Lear next to Sabimidori. Octopus Fluids Green Squirrel next to Tasia Sabimidori. We've got Shin Ryoku, Pilot Roshizuku Shin Ryoku next to Califolio Teodora. Stipula Bright Green. Next to Teodora. It's definitely lighter and greener than Pelican 4001 Dark Green. And so I guess it would be the same for Monteverde California Teal and Diplomat Deep Green. So yeah, the closest I have is Palette of Shin Shinryoku. It seems that Teodora is a bit bluer. Robert Oster River of Fire next to Mandarin Duck Nape. Octopus Fluids Petrol Axolotl. Petrol Axolotl seems a bit bluer. I really like River of Fire. That's cool. I don't have anything that's exactly like Robert Oster River of Fire. I, I like this ink. And I don't have anything that's similar to this either. The closest that I have is probably Lichen, really. Even though one is obviously blue and one is obviously green. Like this looks blue next to this one. This looks green next to this one. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this one out in a pen. I'm looking forward to trying this one out in a pen. Here are my blues, Leonardo. Officina Italiana Blue is a deeper color. Private Reserve American Blue. Robert Oster Blue Martini next to Urbain Bleu de Profondeur. Such a gorgeous color. I love both of these colors. Yep. Silent Night was the ink color that I was thinking of when I saw Bleu de Profondeur. Bleu de Profondeur is a, a more saturated version. Like these two have basically the same brightness but one is a bit more saturated than the other. I love both of them, but I appreciate the, the higher saturation in the Urban. Taj Mahal next to Bleu de Profondeur, much more saturated. Where is Waterman Serenity Blue? There we go. I knew it, I knew it. Okay, so here is Waterman Serenity Blue. Yeah, they are so very similar to each other. It seems like Serenity Blue might have a little bit more reddish sheen, inherent in this color than Pilot Blue, but they are, they are pretty similar. And Pilot Namiki Blue is quite close to Pilot Roshizuku Ajisai as well. And this seems to be a much more violet, violet, <laughs> violet blue color. Oh, look at how pretty they are. Look at that. 
Oh, yeah, I'm going to write a heading for these swatches, but yeah, look at, look at River of Fire. Look at that. <laughs> oddballs. Yep, oddballs out. But it's fine. Gorgeous. Anyway. Oh, this is nice. I just wish it behaved. <laughs> I wish it worked. I wish it was a wetter ink. So, I mean, I could make it a wetter ink. I could definitely make it a wetter ink and still enjoy it. So... You know, I might end up doing that. Sbri Brown is cool. I really like Pecan. I like Rikucha. Rikucha. I like Lichen. I like River of Fire. Sabimidori. Bleu de Profondeur. And these are nice. The rest of those are nice as well. But the ones that I really, really enjoy. Let me go ahead and get the swatch cards. Ones that I don't have to have. I mean, I don't have to have any of them. But the ones that I am really, really enjoying. Um, these are fine as well. So these are the ones that like really stood out to me during this swatching session. And it, it, it looks, these inks look boring, <laughs> but I promise you that they were fun to use on those papers. Would you gravitate more towards a colorful palette like this? Or would you gravitate more towards something that was, I guess, a bit more calming and fall autumn-esque? Let me know your thoughts, what you thought of all of these inks and the swatching session. I hope you enjoyed it. This was the longest swatching session I have ever done. <sighs> I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If you like this format of videos, hopefully next time I will have much more to talk about. So give me your questions, write them down, send them to me, however you like, whether it's a comment in this, for this video, or you want to send me a question through Instagram. My Instagram handle is Life Inspires Design. So you can find me there. You can always find me here on YouTube. So thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Ooh-wee.